All right, so now you should have the engine fully installed and hopefully be ready to really sink your teeth into this course. So to get started, for this lecture, I'm gonna be talking about projects. So first things first, what is a project in the context of the Unreal Engine? A project is simply the unit that stores all the information for an individual game, meaning each game you create will be stored in their own project. For example, if I were developing a first-person shooter game, I might have a project called Shooter Project. And then if I wanted to work on another game, perhaps a puzzle game, I would create a new project and call it Puzzle Project or something. All you really need to know is that one project equals one game. So if I were working on five different games, I should have five different projects, one for each game. All right, so if you don't already have it running, go ahead and go to your desktop and double click on the Epic Games Launcher shortcut that you created during installation. From there, make sure you are on the Unreal Engine tab and click the yellow Launch button in the upper right corner. This will launch the Unreal Project Browser. The Unreal Project Browser is where you can open your existing projects or create new ones. The Recent Projects tab contains thumbnail images of all the projects the project browser was able to find, which would include any projects within the installation directory and any projects you previously created or opened. To open a project, simply double click on it, or select it and click the Open button in the bottom right corner, and it will open the Unreal Editor and load that project into it. If you have lots of projects and need some help finding it, you can enter all or part of the name of the project in the search bar at the top, and this will narrow down the results based on what you entered. So as I previously mentioned, this will only list the projects that the project browser could find. If you were to, for example, download an existing project from the internet onto your desktop, until you open that project, the project browser won't know about it. This is what the Browse button is for. In this situation, you would need to click the Browse button and browse to that project file on your desktop and open it from there. Once you open it, however, from then on, the project browser will know about it and it will appear in the list. Okay, so now look in the upper right corner and you'll see a Refresh button that can be used to refresh the list of project th thumbnails. So again, let's say that you download a project from the internet, but instead of saving it to the desktop, you save it in the installation directory instead then the project browser will be able to find it. However, it won't appear in this list until you click the refresh button. Okay, and then at the bottom of the window is the marketplace button. Clicking this will simply take you to the marketplace tab of the Epic Games Launcher, where you can download existing environments, objects, characters, etc., either for free or for a price. Okay, and then in the bottom left corner, you'll see a checkbox labeled, Always Load Last Project on Startup. So what this will do, if you check this, the next time you hit the launch button in the games launcher, it will skip this project browser altogether and automatically open the last project you worked on. So this is useful if you only plan to be working on one project for several days, weeks, or months at a time. It will allow you to skip this step every time. And if you did want to open a new or different project, you can still do that through the file menu of the Unreal Editor. And if you check this box and later decide you do want the project browser to open on launch, you can change this setting in the editor preferences, which I will cover in another lecture. Okay, so now if you want to create a new project, there are four different categories you can choose from, depending on the industry you are targeting. In this course, we're interested in creating games, so I'm going to select that tab. You'll notice there are several options to choose from, a blank project and several template projects. The templates are all based around common game types. So for example, if I know I want to create a first person shooter, I could start with the first person template and that will load with several features common to first person games already hooked up and ready to go. Alternatively, if I want to create a racing game, the vehicle template would make a good choice. And then the project default section contains several different settings you can configure. The first setting determines if this project will use Blueprints or C++ to script its logic. C++ is a programming language that uses code. Blueprints are a visual scripting system unique to Unreal Engine that makes it easier for people outside of the computer science industry to script logic for their Unreal projects. This course will teach the Blueprint system. Next, you can choose the overall class of hardware that you are planning to develop your game for. You can choose between desktop for developing computer and console games and mobile for developing phone and tablet games. 
Next, you have the option of setting the overall graphics quality to maximum or scalable. In general, you would pair the desktop setting with the maximum and the mobile setting with scalable, which makes this setting somewhat redundant. However, if you wanted to, for example, create a desktop game that could operate using minimal resources, you could pair the desktop and scalable settings together here. Next, you have the option of including starter content in your project or not. Checking this option will load into your project from the start a lot of basic content you can use to get, to get you going, such as materials, objects, etc. And finally, you can select if ray tracing should be enabled or disabled. Ray tracing is a technology that improves the rendering of light to make it look more realistic. However, only the newest of graphics cards have the ability to perform real-time ray tracing. So if your graphics card doesn't, you won't see any difference by enabling the setting. All right, so finally, when you've selected the template you want to use, if any, and configured your settings, you just need to go to the bottom of the window and choose where you want the project to be saved, give it a name, and click the Create button in the bottom right. This will open the Unreal Editor and load a new project into it based on the settings you chose. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and explore some of the built-in template projects that are available for you to use. So first, select the first person template. For the settings, choose Blueprint, Desktop, Maximum, No Starter Content, and No Ray Tracing. By selecting the first person template, you will be provided with some first person content that will be placed into your level and automatically hooked up properly. So we won't be using any of the generic starter content in this lecture. Now choose the folder where you want to save this project and give it a name. Then click create to create the project and load it into the Unreal Editor. So now you should see the template level in the viewport. And all I want to do for this part of the lecture is give you a chance to play these template levels to let you see what Unreal is capable of right out of the box. And also so you can have a little fun with the engine before we go into full on education mode. So anytime you want to try out your game in the Unreal Editor, all you need to do is go up to the toolbar here and press the play button. And this will load your game right here within the editor. From here, you can control your character by using either the keyboard and mouse or a game controller if you have one connected. Using the keyboard, you'll first need to click the left mouse button to gain mouse control over the viewport, and then you can use the WASD keys for directional movement and the mouse for rotational movement, just as you would in almost any first person game. You can also use the space bar to jump and click the left mouse button to fire your projectile. Using a traditional game controller, you would use the analog sticks to control movement, the right trigger to fire your projectile, and the bottom button of the four buttons on the right to jump. To go full screen, simply press the F11 key on the keyboard, just as you would to go full screen in a web browser. So as you play around a bit, you'll notice that there really are a lot of things already hooked up and ready for you to go. You have a character who has movement and other actions mapped to the keyboard and controller already. You have an area to move around in with some objects you can interact with. Uh, when you fire your projectile, there is a firing animation for your character that is triggered by that event. And perhaps most importantly, there are physics already in place. For example, when you jump, you don't just keep going up and up. You go up at first, then slow down, then start coming back down until the ground stops your movement. In other words, this level already has gravity configured, something we often take for granted really. Also, when you fire your projectile, it will bounce off walls and interact with the boxes in a realistic way. And if you fire your projectile at the smaller boxes, then fire it at the larger ones, you'll notice the larger boxes with presumably more mass are less affected by the force of the projectile. So you can see this is really a great starting point for creating a first person shooter game. Now, when you're ready to exit, press F11 to exit full screen mode, then press escape to exit the game preview. All right, so if you want to create a new project once you're already inside the editor, just go up to the menu bar right here and select file, new project. Okay, so at this point, I encourage you to play around with the other templates. If you ever want to make a similar type of game in the future, it's a lot easier to get started with a template that already has a lot of the game mechanics developed than it is to start from scratch. Alright, and that will conclude the lecture on projects.